Hey you guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be doing an updated version of my anatomy video. This is how I draw poses that I think are especially complicated and basically how I approach drawing bodies from reference photos. But if you want a more comprehensive anatomy video, I would just recommend Proko's videos because that is how I learned this in the first place. But for this one, we're just gonna start with the most basic human form that we can get away with and we're gonna break it down into parts right now starting from the head which for now is just a round shape with a little bit of excess at the bottom for the jaw and then our neck is just gonna be this tube that's holding up that head and then for the shoulders i always just have in these circles so it's easier to see them as joints before we draw the chest which i also just see as a more like a tapered down cereal box. Then this would just be almost down to the rib cage. This isn't the full torso. So then it's just easier to draw the waist under it as another tube. The hips, I think, are one of the more difficult parts. The way I really see it is how Barbie dolls are constructed. This is almost shaped like underwear, but the most important part is how it's tapered down. And so we'll have a different set of circles for the joints that hold up the legs a similar way to how dolls and action figures are before we have in the thighs which are just tubes that taper down slightly and then the knees will be more circles before we go down to the calves which are again very similar to the thighs just a little bit more tapered down than that ankles are circles as well that holds the feet which for now are just going to be these triangles we'll be breaking it down more later and then the arms are very similar to the legs except they taper down slightly less than the thighs but they're really essentially just tubes before we go to the elbows which are again because their joints are represented by the circles and the same thing to the wrists before we draw the hands as this very basic shape for now and we're breaking them down later on as well. So what's really important when drawing in the poses is to make sure that the movement is mostly centered around the joints of the body. So all of the circles we see here on this figure that is going to be where the range of movement is going to be focused on. Everything else is just going to be attached to them. There will be little twists and turns to each parts of the body, but mostly they start from the joints. So I really think that it's the most important parts that we need to keep in mind of when we're drawing poses. So now we're going to break down each and every part of this body, starting from the head. So the head is mostly just this very round shape for the top part of the head. It's important to see them as these different parts because it'll help us from making the heads too short or too rounded later and then the side of the head is just more flat that's why we'll have this cross right here to represent that flat plane and the rest of the head going down to the jaw will be another part of the head that we think about when we're drawing the face and then the neck will just be at the very center of that initial circle that we've put in so it doesn't start right at where the jaw is it's a little bit farther back so this is what it looks like from the side and then from the front it just looks like this just keep in mind that it's a little bit more flat on the sides of the top of the head and again it's important to see this all as a three-dimensional shape so when we're looking down from that head we'll see more of that very round part of the skull and less of the jaw where it tapers down the features are going to be pushed down more so we really don't get to see it so for the chest i just mostly see it as a tapered down cereal box if i was drawing a more conventionally female body i would make it more pointy but really it's one of the more basic parts of the body i just really have this very boxy shape for it from the front and then for the hips, this is one of the more complicated parts of the body. It's mostly shaped like underwear. And what's important again is to see it as this 3D shape. So if we're looking at it 
from the top down it would look a little bit like this with this flat plane on top and it also would taper down more at this angle so you wouldn't be able to see much of the circles that we put in to represent the joints that holds the legs for example sitting and we're looking at them straight on it would look more like this where the hollows that would hold the joints will be facing us so and so it would look more like this so for the arms i just again draw them as tubes the most important thing is to remember that they don't include the elbows and the shoulders so these are if you can imagine just the bones of the arms so if you're trying to gauge the length of the arm try to keep this apart from the joints that hold them it's the same thing for the forearms just a little bit more tapered down i think than the upper arm so you can see right here the way that the arms fold is really centered towards where the joints are so if you're drawing them folded like this make sure that we're separating the shoulders and the elbows so keeping those two separated the upper arm and the forearms should look the exact same as they do when they're straight just drawn at a different angle when it comes to the hand i find that the easiest way to draw them is to break them down into three different parts so the first is the shape of the palm not including the thumb and then one whole shape for the four fingers with another muscle that holds out the thumb completely separate from the rest of the two so it's almost looking at it like if you were wearing mittens because the thumb is a lot more mobile than the rest of the fingers and so just need to draw it separate from the other four so looking at it from the back it would look like this just we see less of the fold of the muscle that holds out the thumb and then if you have trouble with the spacing in your fingers i also like to draw in this palm with four circles so it's easier for me to space them out before i draw the actual fingers and then again the muscle that holds out the thumb will be completely separate but when you draw in the fingers since we had those circles to space them out it's a lot easier to draw the hands after that when it comes to the feet i really just draw in this ball right here before I draw in this very tapered down triangle for the rest of the feet. If we were looking at it from the side and and if they were on their tiptoes, it would look like this with just the toes holding in the rest of the feet, um, not really folded anywhere before that. And when looking at it from the front, I really just draw the feet like this. <laughs> the toes I just keep together since they don't move independently from each other as much as fingers do. Okay, so now we're gonna start with our first example and I really like this pose because it's pretty simple. It's just the angle that we're looking at it from that's a little bit unconventional and so it's great practice. So the first thing that I do is try to imagine that there's a line going across the farthermost points of the pose to figure out if I have enough space for all of it. And so I try to have that in there as an extra step. And then the first thing that we're going to do is try to place the head in the overall shape. And since we're looking down at it and almost from the side of, of this person, we can see this flat part of the head while the rest of the face is a lot more tapered down. And so after that, we're going to try to pinpoint in where the shoulders are in the photo before we attach the arms to it. And the same thing with the elbow. The arms are actually one of the easier body parts to draw, I think. And we're going to do the same thing for the other arm, trying to see where the elbows and the shoulders are in the photos first before we draw in the arms attached to them. And for right here, because we don't really see his other shoulder it's hidden we can then start to uh, move the rest of the arm in that direction as well and it's torso, especially the rib cage right here we don't really see a lot of it since we're almost looking straight down from it it's really just this very tapered down boxy shape and also for the hips it's the same thing we're almost just gonna have this triangle as a placeholder for it 
the knees here are very important so let's try to mark them out first before we draw in especially this one on the right is sitting towards the center of his forearm so it's very easy to place and then we're gonna have the calves attached to those knees and then we're gonna do the same thing to the ankles try to see where they are on the body first so this one is right near the hand before we draw in the rest of the calves and the feet and since this right one's completely hidden we're just gonna leave it like it is and so now what i'm gonna do is try to finish in the details on top of that very basic doll shape and you can really see adding in those details really completes the figure and clothing does a lot to that too. I think the most important thing is the stitching on the clothes because it really gives you an idea of how the clothes are positioned in the body and in the same way how the body is twisted with reference to the clothes. So I really like drawing clothes in almost as much as drawing actual humans so it's the same thing for the pants right here where they fold isn't even as important as just how they're draped on the figure for now and then what i'm gonna do is take in my highlighter and just add in the very basic shadows of the figure just to show you guys how I complete these sketches over top of how I drew the body underneath. I use at least two markers so I can get enough contrast in my shadows. For this one, I'm focusing it on the darkest parts of the photo. Try to use it to go in the general direction of where the clothes are folding. I think that adds a lot to the shapes as well. And then the last thing I do is just use my black gel pen to add in the final details of the piece. I try to focus these dark lines on the darkest parts of the shadow as well. What's most important is to use this to finish out the folds and the shapes of the clothes because, and especially where the stitching is, like I mentioned before, because it's actually very important to make a hasty sketch look more finished. It also just gives a little bit more perspective to the pose when we add in the stitching of the clothes. I think it's a really good practice to, to line them when you're drawing poses like this. But yeah, that is how I mostly draw in these highlighter and pen sketches. After this, we're gonna have another example. So for this one, we're doing the same thing as before, marking out the outermost parts of the piece before starting in with the head again and keeping in mind how it's placed in that overall shape that we drew in. And since we're looking at her from the side now, we'll see more of that flat part of her head before we draw in her jaw and the rest of the head and then you can see right here too where the neck starts because we're looking at her from the side. And then we draw in her shoulder as well before drawing in the rest of the arms and the hands with regards to where the shoulders and the elbows are in the piece. So this right one is mostly hidden from us but the arm is going out so we can see the arms more than the shoulders. But when we're drawing her rib cage, that cereal box, since we're looking at it from the side, we can clearly see the side plane of that box more than the front one and then the tube for her spine right here is very curved because of how she's sitting and so her hips would follow along as well and again because we're looking at her from the side we see more of the circular opening of her hips more than more than the rest of its shape and then as usual we try to place in the knee before drawing the rest of the legs and then for her hand right here, I'm just going to roughly draw it in, just still keeping in mind where the wrist is in relation to the rest of the arms. And when we're drawing her calf, because the legs are very soft, you can see that there's overlap between them where the legs would squeeze when folded together. But the feet are again just at an angle, still folded right before the toes. And so now we're going to draw in our actual figure on top of that doll-like structure and when I'm drawing in her hair I just wanted it to have a lot of volume and so you can see it's 
poofed out from the actual shape of her head. I want to make sure that the curves are a lot more pronounced and you can see right here when I'm drawing in the elbow it has this long pentagon shape but it really just separates itself from the rest of the arm and the forearm. And again when we're drawing in the clothes try to think of how they will be draped on the body, how they will be folded especially right here and also add in the stitching so it really gives a lot of perspective to the clothes. And the sign between her thigh and her calf, I'm giving more emphasis to that. And also when I'm drawing in the knees, I'm using a lot more straighter lines because it's a very bony part of the body. There's not a lot of fat padding it. So I'm just going to finish this whole thing the same way as I did the first one with a layer of my highlighter over most of the figure. I'm trying to keep out of the highlights and I'm wanting to preserve them as much as I can but I do think I finished it off with some more of my white ink so I did more shape to the highlights. Just gonna finish it the same way as I did the first one with my pens and then we will be going over another sketch after this. So this final example is the most complicated one I would say but we're gonna start it the same way we did the other two with an outline for the whole thing and then starting with the head. Trying to keep in mind how it's placed within the shape that we initially had but for this one we're a lot of it is actually dependent on how we draw the rib cage. so try to see that cereal box a lot more curved. And we also see more of the bottom of that cereal box and it will help us place in the shoulders after. Also the same way with the rest of the arms. The spine is also very curved right here so I'm trying to draw that. And also the hips are very complicated but it's sort of facing us so we would see more of the hollows for the legs right here. And then we would just need to place in the knees so we can attach that to the thighs and then the ankles and the feet. The stuff that looks a lot more complicated than it actually is, we just need to make sure that we keep in mind again where the knee is and it actually goes up to almost the center of her chest. So once we have the placement of the knee, we can then just draw in the calf attached to it since the thigh is completely hidden by it. Except for this one, I actually skipped out the contours of the actual body and went straight ahead with the clothes and since the movement of the clothes in this pose is very dynamic in and of itself just really kept their movement in mind and paid attention to how the creases are on this body and and how the fabric looks stiff on some areas like the coat and the shorts but on the shirt is a lot softer so there's a lot more creases to it and again with the leg it's just more straighter lines since it's a lot more bony than the rest of the body. But yeah, after that I just used in my darker highlighters in the same way as before. Mostly focused on the shadows and the creases of the clothes before going over it again with my gel pen on top. So yeah, that will be it for this video. I hope you guys find this helpful. I just have always been wanting to redo this video and I'm happy that I finally did. I will be doing the same thing for my sketching portraits tutorial because I just don't really like how my older videos aged and how I edited them. But thank you guys for watching this one. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me. And if you want to see real-time sketches and paintings, I have them on there. The link to it will be in the description. Thank you guys for watching and I will be seeing you guys again soon.